Hello, and welcome to this interview with Miriam Lefkowitz, one of our artists presently on display at Alpha's Art Gallery's current exhibition, Mirror to the World. My name is Katie Perrin, and together we will be going over some of Lefkowitz's artistic process, as well as the pieces that were graciously contributed to both our physical and online presentations. We're going to start off pretty simple today. Miriam, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Great. Very excited. Yeah, we're super excited to have this opportunity to um, sit down and discuss uh, your artwork with you. So first, tell us a little bit about yourself, where are you from and where do you live now? And how did you initially get into art and begin your career as an artist? Okay, um, I live in Highland Park, New Jersey. I am originally from Maryland, born in Silver Spring, Maryland. I started out as an artist I think when I was born, I loved to draw. Um, I drew all the time, though I did not think I could have a career as an artist. So I went into computers, my left brain, videography, and then eventually I came back around to art as an adult. I took classes at Rutgers University and realized that this was something essential to me to do. And coming back to it as an adult, I just had a lot more confidence. I was able to jump into oil painting without learning how to oil paint and just try out lots of different materials, you know, without necessarily following the rules. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and I think you can see like the your experimentation in throughout um, your aesthetic process and especially in your works in Mirror to the World. Um, and to pivot a little bit, I want to ask you what your inspiration is behind the selection of your mixed media works on display in Mirror to the World. Okay, well, this is most of my work is oil painting, as you can see in the piece behind me, which is oil on linen. However, when I travel, it's very difficult to bring oil paints with you. They don't travel well, they don't dry quickly. Um, so I bring gouache, which I have always loved, very similar to watercolor, but it's not transparent. Um, I also bring colored pencils, oil pastels, crayons, other materials. And this group of paintings was created in the Poconos on vacation. Um, I have my own little house cabin, set all my mater materials up, sometimes during the day, sometimes at night. So these were all very much inspired by the world around me at the time. Uh -huh. That's yes, I love that. Um, and um, in a similar vein to the question I just asked you before, um, why do you choose to work with different artistic media and how does creating multimedia art relate to your overall aesthetic practice and to the messaging in your work? I, I, believe my attraction to the media has everything to do with the feel of the materials on the paper or on the canvas or often I do paint on found materials found wood found glass so for instance the pieces in the show are on watercolor paper when you take an oil pastel and draw it across the bumpy surface of the watercolor paper it adheres completely differently than if you used a brush loaded with gouache or even a colored pencil. So all of those differences create the piece in front of me. And I believe I just like variety. Yeah, no, I, I definitely I definitely hear that. Um, and although the pieces on display in the show are mixed media works, I'm really intrigued by your educational and professional background in videography, photojournalism and photography. How do you think that your experience working in different media and different professional settings has shaped your current practice and who you are as an artist? Great question. Um, the photography I went into in my early 20s, um, I was trying to focus on doing art photography, but I did get into a little bit of photojournalism when I traveled to Costa Rica and I quickly realized I wasn't cut out for this. I did not have that layer or boundary you need in order to take pictures of people, for instance, in distress. Um, however, art was something always very private to me and as I got older I realized this is not something I needed to keep hidden but I could just go out and create art and during that period of time I was doing a videography of dance performances in New York City 
we shoot modern dance on stage in theaters. So I'm very attracted to the human body and how it moves. And also I grew up as a dancer. So I think the relationship of the body to my work is, even though my work is abstract, it's very anamorphic. And that's always in the back of my mind, a face coming out, a hand coming out, or a finger. Definitely. Um, and I, you can see that in works like The Performer, which I definitely want to talk about a little bit later. Um, but first, uh, in your art artist statement, you mentioned how your richly colored art is inspired by both your emotions and the beauty of the natural world. And that is, it is a combination of your head, body, and spirit, along with your love of color and the physicality of your hands moving a brush or pencil that create the work we see. One aspect of your practice that stands out to me is your unique approach to your art, which can be encapsulated in your words. Instead of drawing water, you draw how you feel in water. In your works on display and mirror to the world, what are some central themes or subject matters that you explore? So I think this grew out of criticism I received as a young child when I made a purple paper mache dinosaur. And I was told that dinosaurs aren't purple. So I went through life with this bias that I couldn't draw because what I drew didn't look like what it was in real life. But then as I got older, I realized baloney. You know, so I started creating work that came from within me and has a lot to do with the color and the materials and is all create, created very spontaneously. So when I'm in the Poconos, I'm surrounded by the sun, the water, the leaves, the noises of the birds, or maybe Stephen King playing on the, you know, on my um, audio on Audible. All of that is affecting me, affects how I, what I'm using, whether I pick up a brush or a pencil, whether I load my paint with the color, you know, cobalt blue, or I choose cadmium red. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that like, I, you can definitely see like how, like that personal take and personal approach you have to your art. And um, I would say another subject matter that you really explore is the human form, which you mentioned earlier, even though you are an abstract artist, um, you can definitely see the human form or these anamorphic forms within your artwork. Um, and I'm really intrigued by the implication of a human figure in your abstract piece entitled The Performer. What is your motivation behind creating this linear, colorful, colorful figure? And what is the story behind this piece? Um, when I first started experimenting with art on my own with oil painting, I mostly did do portraiture. I felt for some reason I could see the face coming out of the paper. Like Michelangelo said, you know, the David was in the stone and he just uncovered it. So when I, for some reason, I feel more comfortable, I can see the eyes, it feels like an eye, it feels like a hand. So that influenced my work as I began to let myself just do abstract work. The thing about abstract, the way I work, it's not planned. So it's often difficult to know, where do you stop? How do you know when your piece is finished? The performer came out as a figure and it intrigued me the way it began developing. And I could feel within me the sense of this is somebody on a stage. So I began to leave more white space in my work. And that pretty much started with that piece and a few other pieces in the show. Instead of covering the whole paper, I tried to leave some blank area to give the viewer the sense of what was actually emerging. Mm -hmm. Um, and color is really integral to the work that you create. And I love that you work with such vibrant colors. Um, and um, on that note, what is the story behind the title of your green, yellow, and red hued work, Like a Circus? And how do the colors in this piece interact to tell a story? Um, the piece, Like a Circus, um, was a piece that I did fill up the whole canvas and kept working with it. and. So what happens with abstract art, often like the black, the darker colors pull you in, the brighter colors push you back. And this is how, when you look at a piece, your eyes move over the whole canvas. But as an artist, I don't want the viewer to look and then look away. I want them to keep coming back to it. And the, the circus piece, you know, I realized it was all tied together as a package, even though there were shapes all over I kept working on it until I felt like it hung together. And sometimes you go too far and you have to discard the piece, but often it does work. 
Yes. And I think it definitely works in that piece. Um, and uh, to talk about two other um, works of yours, Merged and Riverscape, um, that appear to be these cool toned and beautiful abstractions featuring water and aquatic landscapes. Um, I want to know what is your motivation behind creating and naming these pieces and what story do these tell? So I love to swim. I think I was a fish in a previous life. I love to swim particularly in oceans, rivers, lakes. When I'm in the Poconos, I'm right at the Delaware River and I spend most of my time in the water, in the river, swimming from the border of Pennsylvania to New York and back. Eagles and the, the um, fireflies and everything all around me, the birds. So when I come back to the cabin and start to paint, I feel like I'm still in the water. And after so many frustrating years of trying to recreate the water the way it looks, I decided to start pulling out what was inside me about the water and just put that on the page. And that's why I'm drawn to the blue, different blues, the different greens, but also this piece where you can kind of see there's a horizon and a land, but it's not necessarily something you would recognize. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, I love that. Um, and in your vibrantly colored work, Bite, uh, which is another piece in the show, what is the motivation and symbolism behind the abstract symbols, brushstrokes, shapes, and lines you chose to include in the painting? So I, just to be honest here, I have a difficult time sometimes titling my pieces. So that piece, Bite, that title came after the piece was created. And I think that piece is basically about the magenta color in there, that really vibrant color that was put down with the oil pastels. I have these luscious oil pastels and just the action of taking the pastel and drawing it on the page and oh my God, it fills me up like a turkey dinner. So that that shape in there and then the surrounding pieces are kind of supporting the shape. So there's supporting shapes and colors. Definitely. And I, I love like that, that pop of magenta. It definitely is like, I think the focal point of the piece um, or one of the focal points for sure. Um, and in your piece stage, which is one of my personal favorites, I really love the interplay of vibrant colors, textures, and fluid shapes. I would love to know the inspiration and story behind this piece. What did you intend to convey through this piece and what is the significance of its iconography? Stage very much like the performer relates to my work with videography and shooting performances. As I was creating that piece, I could just sense that white blank area was on the stage and all the movement around it, the color, the marks were the performers on the stage and the audience watching the piece. So those are like all our emotions together as we're watching somebody leap and twirl around the stage. Though in this particular piece, you don't see the performer, you just see the surrounding stage and, and what's going on. Yes, and I think by like not seeing the performer, I think it like it, there's like a, it per, like it draws you into the painting and you wanna like it see more and reflect on it. Exactly, um, and it leaves space for you to create the performer that you see on that stage. Yes. Which I think is great in art when it can do that, when it can push the viewer to kind of create something on their own. Yeah, it creates like that dialogue between the viewer and their own imagination and like the artwork. Um, and what is the significance behind your choice to experiment with abstraction in your artistic practice? That's a great question. Um, that was, I had been doing these very complicated, huge oil paintings where I used different materials, photographs, made preparation drawings, preparation paintings. And then I went through this time where I, I wasn't feeling connected to my work and encouraged by my friends who are artists and my reading, I decided just to break through and paint what was in my head and not to judge not to try to put it in some educational reference where it fits, you know, in the history of art, but just have it be about expressing myself, which sounds very simple, but is actually not. It's very difficult to put away your preconceived ideas of what you should be painting, you know, what you're supposed to paint. So this abstract work, the piece behind me, the pieces in the show, was a very 
focused, conscious move of mine to start letting my inner art come out, which is very scary, but extremely rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, and of all your works, which is your favorite or which do you have a particular attachment to? If you don't have a favorite, which piece would you spend, like to spend a little bit more time talking about? Well, the pieces in my show, I think my favorite is the performer. It, it was, for me, a, a bit of a breakthrough. And it was the first time I had actually created an abstract piece that really didn't look particularly abstract. And also it was the first time I started leaving space in the piece, leaving room for the viewer to breathe, for me to breathe, you know, and not feel this nervous energy, this nervousness that I have to cover everything up. Yeah, definitely. And um, that was a beautiful piece. Um, thank you. And thank you, Miriam. I don't have any more questions. However, if there's anything else you'd like to add that you might have thought of during our interview, anything you're working on now, any shows you're going to be in soon, any lingering thoughts, feel free to share. Thank you very much for the interview. I just want to encourage everybody to go to see the show if you can. It looks wonderful. And once again, thank you so much for speaking with us all today and sharing insight into your creations. I would also like to take this moment to thank um, our sponsors, including Amboy Bank, Magyar Bank, Johnson & Johnson, New Brunswick City Center, Middlesex County Cultural and Heritage Commission, and Bristol Myers Squibb and Pfizer Inc. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kate.